uh, I ended up trading. <laughs> I don't think this is what you're talking about. I ended up, I stole something from somebody and I was like, oh yeah, like this is super awesome. Uh, hopefully nobody steals it from me. Somebody stole it from me and there was one gift left. And you got duck off. It's stuff that keeps ducks out of swimming pools. No. Relatable. 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 Hey. Oh, hey. We're here. We made it. That's right. We're here at a. Well, you made it. Yeah. Snake Studio. Here at Snake Studio. Shake that rattle. Rattle, tattle, repeat. So we would like to kick this uh, episode of Relatable off with a uh, shot since we are able to actually do one. Uh, Cheers. Cheers. That's where the Coke went. No, I don't need it. Taking shots of vodka is never a good idea. My mama only raised one. <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, okay. So rude. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, I cleared up so, one, of my, uh, one of my days of passages. Oh. That was pretty nice. Oh. Well, it is the season. And then, you know me, I'm always snacking. So I've got us some Smokehouse Blue Diamond Almonds. because oh, With extra salt? Yeah, want some? Well, I mean, I'm what else says says I've got money? Then I'm sitting here eating almonds. What? What's wrong? Were they extra salted? Jesus Christ! No, this was normal salt. You ever had salt before? What were these like? You said these were roasted. Mm-hmm. Did they roast it with pork? I don't know. Maybe because it's got like that hammy flavor. Want some more? Yeah, They're yeah, delicious. Yeah, 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 yeah. I won't say no. <laughs> so here we are in the beautiful Pittsburgh. Um, we're going to be selling, celebrating Christmas. That's right. With our mom, who is due in on Thursday. She's due on Thursday. We're going to have a third kid. She's due. And it's been a minute because, you know, life happens. And, um, but we're here. And that's all that matters. That's right. And this is the highest quality one yet. It is. It's pretty high quality. We've got lots of things in store for you. Yeah. And I think that we should start this podcast off on a um, high note. What? Are you drinking just vodka and Coke? Vodka and Coke, yes. Oh, that sounds nasty. I'm drinking a white rush. <clears throat> a distinguished gentleman. Obviously. Mm. Twirl my mustache just, just for you guys. <laughs> Well, this is like Christmas themed yeah. for today's episode. Russians are very Christmassy. They are. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how much milk I can take in a day. I thought that's cream. half and half. Heavy cream. Well, it's half. Wait, half what is cream it half? and half milk? Yeah, what is half and half? Maybe it's half cream, half water. What is half and half? I don't know. These are the questions. What is half and half? What is half and half anyway? Bonappetit.com. And what do you, and what to do if you don't have any? I don't know. Keep, keep skipping until they give us the answer. I don't like it when they don't tell you. I know. It's a whole thing. Half whole milk, half heavy cream. Boom. Half and half. That's it. Whole milk and heavy cream. What's the difference then between whole milk and heavy cream? Whole milk is milk and heavy cream is heavy cream. You want to know what heavy cream is? Yeah, what's heavy cream? I wonder if it's like they start to let the milk curdle a little bit. It's a cream with no less than 36% milk fat. Oh, so it's just a higher fat content milk. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, higher higher fat. What determines that? Probably not as watered down. It's fatter cows. Maybe they strain the cream. Fatter the fatter cows, cows make fatter cows make fatter milk. <laughs> Get your cream on. So I want to start this uh, off on a really high note by talking about celebrities that we lost in twenty twenty one. 
Because I was looking back at this and I was like, oh my God, I forgot we lost some of these people. We did. We lost um, Ed Asner. I don't really Rest know who he Asner. was. He was 91, so he lived a nice long life. If- Ed Asner, Angel YMH. He was a huge. You remember that? I don't know who don't he is. Don't be stingy, Mark. No, I don't. Oh, my God. It was in oh, the, oh Mary the, Tyler Moore. You never saw the heavy segments. I forgot. No. The, the YMH lives. No. Yeah. It was on Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah, okay. Don't, don't be stingy. That's where it spits. We lost Jessica Walter, oh, yeah. who is the mom from Rest Arrested Peace. Development. Arrested Development, and also she played Mallory Archer in the TV show Archer. Which is one of my favorites. I don't know. She died all the way in March. Yeah. This was like forever ago. And you know, for 80, she looked really, really good. She did. Really good. I like the long hair. I like when she pulled it off. The older gals keep the longer hair. I think it looks very nice. All right. Then we've got uh, Prince Philip, which, you know, we all kind of figured that was going to happen. Some of those photos of him were not looking very good when he was alive. I mean, I think he was alive in his body, but I think his soul left it a long time ago. Probably. Have you seen that his show? Eyes, his eyes were like so sunk in. It was like... I know. Have you seen that, that cartoon about the... It's a cartoon about the um, royal family? No. Oh my God. We're watching that tonight. Hold on. Is it like an actual show cartoon? Or yes, is it? it is like the Family Guy version. The Prince. You've never watched The Prince? Yeah, it it's on HBO. Oh my God. It's about the whole royal family. I don't care about that. And every time, no, but every time that they show Prince Philip, like, it's so sad. He's so, oh, uh, rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. I've, yeah. Mm. He, uh, how old was he? They oh, were shit. married for 73 years. He was 99. Yeah. So you know what? Good on him. I wish that he made it to 100, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. Good for him. 99. That is... <clears throat> is that good for him, though? I feel like he's probably just, like, for the past, like, 12 years. Well, if his soul left his body, like, then yeah. his body was just moving at that point. Like, I don't think him and the queen were, like doing any extracurricular activities you know uh, what i mean? mean maybe his soul would have come back you mean- maybe she stopped and that's why his soul left his body probably yeah the most curricular activity he got was having someone push around his wheelchair if she would have given him a little uh su- off the supply and demand you know what i mean then maybe he would have stuck around how old is the queen oh she's like 105 I should probably like 95. I don't know. 95. Damn, I'm good. Did you, were you watching? Um, no. I assume it's going to be about the royal family. No, now. your mom's house. Oh, of course. And they were talking, they kept talking about the queen mm-hmm. having like a dried up. Oh yeah, dried up snatch. Oh my God. I was like, you can't talk about the queen that way. Yeah. We're not in England. We fought against them so we could talk about her this no. in this exact way. That was so inappropriate. <laughs> that whole show's inappropriate. That's the whole point. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe that. They, they said some really... That's why they have a live show to then be more inappropriate. My goodness. They Which were saying great. unspeakable things about the queen. I mean, I already spoke part of it. Unspeakable. Since you chose to cut yourself off halfway. Self-censor. <laughs> That dude, Dustin Diamond, died from, um, what's it called? The dude that plays Screech on Oh yeah, Saved by the Bell. I never watched Saved by the Bell, so I don't really, it doesn't affect me. <gasps> but the dude from Sex in the City, Willie Garson. Garson? Mr. Garson? Big? Not Mr. Big. Oh, he died in just the show. Her, her gay friend. What was his name on the show? But I can't find it uh wait who's her the part of carrie bradshaw's devoted best friend and then they don't say his name that's hateful. 
but but he was on the show and he was her gay best friend and i was he was in the episode where big died and then i'm like i'm watching this episode thinking how sad oh spoiler alert mr big died if you haven't watched sex in the city he had a heart attack i feel like our audience is not a sex in the city viewer but i cried by yeah. myself she then called me and she was like oh my god you watch sex in the city right i was like what what's that i was so perturbed and so you're upset. such a miranda i don't know i think that's what it is miranda she's yeah, like the least connected to her them. feeling she's like the well, you're a sarah jessica parker she's the only character <laughs> whose name i actually jessica know parker. that's her real name not even her, her name in the show yeah exactly because i only know miranda that's it <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not sure. Yeah, just whatever. Anyway. And now I know Mr. Big, but apparently he's dead, so. I was watching the episode and Mr. Big died and I'm crying over Mr. Big. And there's a scene with the gay friend and he and his husband were fighting before this. And they have this meaningful hug in the closet. Like, after they find out that Mr. Big died, like, I'm so (laughs) sorry. Like, this is stupid. Like, we don't, like, let's just be together. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. And I didn't know he was dead. They came out together. The and they came out of the closet together. That's great. He's FaceTiming me. I will call her later. So there's that. Uh the dad from Beethoven died. I do remember his face. It's this dude. He was kind of a schmuck in that movie anyway, but I don't know how that reflects his actual life. But I don't know. Yeah, the dad regardless died. we're sorry, sir. Uh Larry King died yeah, in Larry January. King. So Sock, that was Soccer Souffle. 87. He looked like he was 90. Yeah. Here you go. Once more. Oh, yeah. Um Here's, hey, he did good. Here's the he was one. on TV till he died. Here's the real one you're missing, and it's because that article was written before this happened. This was recently. We lost a true legend. Who? We lost Vicente Hernandez. Who's that? He was a musician of our people. How do you not know Vicente Hernandez? Fernandez. Vicente Fernandez? Vicente Fernandez. I don't know who this is. He was a Mexican singer. He was an actor. Mike, I think, posted producer. something about him. Of course Mike did. Are you kidding me? I would like to pretend like I'm more connected with that part of our culture. Hispanic people. I like to pretend like I'm more connected to that side of our culture than I am because I long to be connected to that side of our culture more than I am. And I long to know Spanish eloquently. His nickname was Gente. Gente? Gente. Fuente? Chen. Gen Fuente? Chen. Chen? C-H-E-N. Chen Fuente? No, just Chen Te. Chen Te. Yeah, Chen Te. Oh, I'm so sorry. Short for Vicente. For our loss. If you listen to some of the songs, you would be like, holy shit. You would recognize it. Okay, I'm putting it on my list. Yeah, you should. Yeah, no, we lost him a couple days ago. Mr. Fuente. I say a couple. Moment of silence for Mr. Fuente. Okay. We also lost Chloris Leachman. White lady? The Cloris Leachman. I guess she was on Marley, Ty- Marley, Mary Tyler Moore as well. But she, was she Mary Tyler? She wasn't Mary Tyler Moore. No, hold on. But Mary Tyler Moore was a real person. I think she was. Yeah, that's someone completely different. Okay. I didn't know Cloris Leachman was in that. Um, but she, where it doesn't say how old she was. She was born in 1926 and died 2021. So she was about 95. Dang. Oh, she was 94. She died in January too. I'm skipping over some folks. Oh, but okay. This one took me by surprise. Norm McDonald. Oh yeah. Really bummed me out. Great he was so see- like quiet about like, I didn't know he was sick. I don't yeah. think really anyone... Except for maybe like, people super close. No, even Howard Stern was saying that he didn't know he was sick. And I feel I, like there's a lot of people nowadays that like that are more in the, the people, more people that are in the spotlight 
when they've gotten like, yeah, sick like that, they've mm-hmm. chosen to just not. Well, and I feel it. So I wonder, and I obviously am no expert, but I wonder too, if you, the more that you put it out there, does that make, like, does that speed up the process? You know what I mean? By them not more acknowledging him, it. More people are going to be mm-hmm. like, oh my God, we want to interview. And like constantly going How do you feel? It. Like, I feel like shit. Do, do you, you want to spend your last days, yeah, yeah just fucking yeah. reaccounting it yeah. versus just being like, all right, I'm just going to yeah, keep going. Yeah, go out, go out his own way. He was only 61. Yeah. He, but it, okay, here you go. He had been privately battling cancer for nearly a decade. No one would have known. 10 years? That's insane. That's wild. Yeah, we love we love Norm. I'm skipping over to some of these folks that I really just don't recognize because a lot of them and respect they're from older films and stuff and older TV shows. But um oh the dude that paid played Gunther on Friends, he died. Gunther, the dude that worked yeah. in the coffee shop yeah, that was obsessed with here. Rachel. He was 59. He passed away peacefully. <gasps> Prostate cancer. Check your holes, boys. Oh, after Jennifer Aniston shared a tribute to him. Oh. Uh, wow. That's crazy. Dude, that's nuts. I think. Hold on. No. I may have reached. These are nuts. Blue diamond. Blue. <laughs> These are nuts. Well, DMX died. Yep. That's nuts. He was only 50. Which I remember after that happened, when did he, he died in April. And we were rolling around just listening to his music all the time after oh, that. Yeah. Oh, I was think I was working in LA. And so we were playing it in the motorhome. <laughs> Man, that's crazy uh that's pretty much the end of what i've got here so you know i knew that uh you wanted to start that off on a high note so that was um yeah today.com has an article on uh all the people that died in 2021 and uh you know there's still a little bit of time left if you want to get on that list that's right you got 10 more days chop chop (laughs) now on a lighter note I would like to share with you something fun. Okay. And that is 45 weird Christmas gifts. I won't go through all 45. Yeah, no, that's way too many. But weird Christmas gifts. It says to please your favorite fruitcake, which I don't know if I really appreciate, but this is Huffington Post. So you can thank them for that. These are things that exist on the internet. Now, hmm. Hmm. I was going to say, I I have a great story that I can share about a a white elephant that I went to recently. Let's talk about that first. So, uh, yeah, I went to a white elephant party. um, And the way that they do it is they do the whole, uh, like, everybody picks, everybody brings a gift under a certain dollar limit. Everybody picks a number. Uh, When your number is called, they go in order. You can grab a gift and then... As long as you're not the very first person, you can either grab a new gift or you can steal an existing gift. And right. And the person who went first at the very end can then steal whatever they want or they can be like, nah, I'm happy with what I got. Can I just say, and if you don't know what a white elephant party is, people probably don't like you because that's why you haven't been invited to one. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I've been invited to white elephant parties since I was little. So funny enough, actually, the first time I ever went to one, um, I ended up getting stuck with something called Duck Off, Have a Quackin' Good Time. Um, so Duck Off? I probably wouldn't Google it if I were you. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, like everybody, you know, there are lots of normal gifts somebody had there was like a painting in there somebody had painted you know they had lots of cool stuff and then uh my unfortunate self 
uh, I ended up trading. <laughs> I don't think this is what you're talking about. I ended up, I stole something from somebody and I was like, oh yeah, like this is super awesome. Uh, hopefully nobody steals it from me. Somebody stole it from me and there was one gift left. And you got duck off. It's stuff that keeps ducks out of swimming pools. No, it's a blow up doll. That's a duck. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, come on. <coughs> Ew! It was the only gift of its kind. Why are you going to buy elephant parties that have a bunch of weird? That was that was the only weird. I'm not going to ruin your next story. That was the only weird thing. However, go figure. Now, a couple years later, I finally get invited to another white elephant. What kind of people are you spending your time with? Yeah, people. Like we always do, as seen on TV. Like we do, like the friendly white version, but we're not all white. We're an array of humans, but we do like. As seen on TV, like, oh my God, like the clapper. Yeah, no. So, so believe it or not, this, the one, the one this year, there was some pretty good stuff there. Uh, somebody got a cone and caution tape. I was like, that's a pretty good one. Why? Why not? Who cares? <laughs> not supposed to be like, oh, this is the greatest. Like you said, as seen on TV, everyone knows that stuff blows. Nobody likes that stuff. The, there's maybe uh, like, there's like one, I really want the clapper. There's like one in a hundred things on there that you're like, this is actually useful. The rest is just garbage. Yeah, but I just want to say, like, there is nothing more amazing than the thought of like, like, even if like you were trying to woo someone and you're like, hey, yeah, like here's my uh oh. You gotta change your battery. All right, we're back. So your friends are getting you something called duck off. They got something called duck off. Yeah. Somebody went to Spencer's and they were like, hey, this is hilarious. So yeah, now come come this year. Uh, yeah, somebody got like a cone and some caution tape. That was pretty cool. Um, somebody got like one of those, uh, you ever heard of the Theragun? Theragun? A yeah, ther- like what, a, a thermometer gun? No, oh. it's like a massager Oh, yeah. Thing. Now, those are cool. They found basically like a cheaper version of that. Um, and then myself and my roommate, Esteban, mm-hmm. uh, we ended up having a gift as a pair. So basically, whatever he then picked out was supposed to be for the both of us to share. Mm-hmm. So he's looking at the gifts. And I see this beautiful, shiny, golden wrapping. And I was like, I would pick that one if you I was. You fell there. for the gold. I absolutely did. But you know what? He didn't. He instead saw something in a nice square package and he was like, this is nicely wrapped. I'm going to go for that. So he grabs it. Oh. He sits back as he's going to sit back down. Everyone's like, ooh, I wonder what that is. Maybe it's like a nice bottle of liquor. Oh, who knows? It could be anything. He goes to open it up. His girlfriend's sitting right next to him. As he's opening it, he's like, he pulls the box out. Yeah, the box looks nice. It's got all the plastic wrap on it. Mm -hmm. And he's like looking at it. And then we hear his girlfriend go, oh my God, it's a penis pump. The room erupts. And I was like, oh my my God, God, it is a curse. I was like, we are doomed to just get all the sexual presents people apparently bring (laughs) to these freaking white elephant Christmas parties. Was it the same people that brought the weird gift two years in a row? Nope. Yeah, nope. I never thought of bringing that to a white elephant Christmas party. Unassociated people, and yeah, the room went wild. And of course, as soon as somebody saw that, somebody else was like, "Oh, I know what I'm going to bring next year." Then, if we're just going to become degenerates, and I was like, "Oh, okay." I was like, "All right." It got heated. People were going crazy. Nobody wanted to steal the penis pump. The end of the day, we wound up with the penis. Everyone's pretending like they're so prudish, though. Oh yeah, no. It's great. And then, of course, you know, we're sitting there and we're just like, oh, boy, we can't wait to share this. And everyone, ah, who gets first first dibs? And we're just like, no. <laughs> thankfully, we... Fever, cleaver, butthole fever. Thankfully, we went to another white elephant party immediately after that one. Unfortunately, Esteban had already ripped off all of the wrapping paper. But you know what was still intact? That golden bag that caught my eye. Oh, no. So we wrapped that in the golden bag, and we were like, hey, guess what? We forgot to get a gift for this one. Wait, what was in the golden bag? I don't remember. 
I want to know if it was something that would have been better than the penis pump. Probably. It was, I think it was candy or chocolates or something. I don't know. Who brings chocolates to a white elephant party? Who brings a penis pump? Someone with a sense of humor. Oh, oh now you think it's funny. <laughs> I do. chocolate. I didn't think it was funny the first time I heard chocolate. it. Who wants chocolate when you can have a penis pump? Exactly. So anyway, we decided, we're like, hey, it's time to re-gift. We're about to give the gift that keeps on giving, just like a penis pump does. So we wrap it up in the gold wrapping. We go to the next place. We got there just in time. They were almost done with their white elephant. And they're like, oh my God, do the nest of honor here. Yay! And I'm just like, don't worry, we brought a gift too. It's in the nice yeah. gold wrapping. We set it on the table. They're like, all right, well, these people are going to go. And then, actually, yeah, then I think it was supposed to be us. Yeah. And they were just like, ooh, there was only one gift left on the table. Now there are two gifts. And they're just like, the newlywed couple, too, was really funny. And uh, the wife goes, you know what? I want the I want the golden wrapping. And I was just like, this is going <laughs> to. Knock yourself <laughs> out, mommy. I was like, well, this happened very fast. Yeah. And of course, she's on, they're trying to unwrap it. They finally get it unwrapped. And they're just like, ooh, that's such a nice box, everyone. Wow, Dylan, Esteban, you know there's a $20 limit, right? You can't be getting like nice bottles of liquor. I was like, wow, everybody just sees a nice box. And they're like, that must be a bottle of liquor. And then as she looks closer, we hear the gasp. Oh! <gasps> And me and Esteban just turn to each other. We start smiling and everyone's like, what? What is it? Like, She's we like, got rid of it. Say, like almost the same shrill voice. It's a penis bump. <laughs> and the whole room again just erupts. Everybody Who just, actually ah! even uses those things? Like, I just don't understand what the point is. Like, well, apparently just there's a- there's supplements for old men. Uh, yeah, no, I don't really get point? it. I guess- Maybe if you have a small peen, you can all- pump it up. Basically, it's like you're just putting it in a vacuum cleaner. That sounds terrible. <laughs> like, yeah, you're just sitting there. You like trap it in there, and then you just try and <laughs> you trap it like a spider under yeah, a cup. You, tra- you, basically, yeah, <laughs> you trap it like a spider under a cup. No! And you suck all the air out, so it gets elongated. Then it's gonna like, but then it's gonna suffocate. Well, that's why you don't. You can't let it suffocate for more than ten minutes. Is that's it like when you suck a cup around your mouth and then sort you get of, yeah. the ring around it, but then you have a ring around your rosy? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Just like lipstick. Yeah, so. So anyway, you yeah. You shouldn't be having these conversations. R- needless to say, everyone was thoroughly enjoyed with the, with the fact that everything was going very fine. Everyone had very nice, modest gifts. There were like Star Fred. Wars. There were like Star Wars chopsticks. Someone had like a uh wholesome gift. A bow bun steamer basket. Uh there was a DND DVD. Like there were some very nice gifts yeah. there. Somebody had a bottle of sake, and then we just fucking we come in, we come in hard with a penis pump. Yeah. Come in hard. And that. the best part is everyone's just like, Dylan, you would. And I was like, where do you even get this from? I was like, it wasn't even me. I was like, first off, it's a gift from both of us. Second off, we planned none of this. This just happened to us. We decided to roll with the punches. Wouldn't like a pump make it more swollen than hard? And that sounds terrible. I don't know. know. I don't don't know how it works. A swollen appendage? Appendage. (laughs) There you go. That's a word. (laughs) Most how you said appendix at first, and I was like, <laughs> "Swollen Are you sure you're appendix." Not to put it on your appendix. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a. We have fun at our holiday parties. Oh obviously. my god! I mean, I I can't say anything. I haven't, you know. You don't cool can't say much. Invited. <laughs> it's okay. So these weird Christmas gifts. I don't know if I'm going to show you pictures unless there's something that's really worth they it. Weirder, uh, they Sometimes imagination is best, huh? They weirder than what I talked about? Probably not. Yeah. Well, Maybe. you'll see. Maybe we'll you'll see. see. <gasps> Ooh, excuse me. Bacon wrapped scent, bacon scented wrapping paper, which I think the bacon scented stuff needs to just go away. I think it was funny 10 years ago. The bacon flavored yeah. toothpaste, but no one 
thinks bacon flavored sure. band aids, toothpaste, dog poop, wrapping paper is funny. Shout out to Epic Mealtime and my man Harley Mornstein. He he brought he really stepped the bacon game up. I remember uh actually I think you were the one that bought it for me, the bacon flavored lube. It was Did cooking, I do that? It was cooking lube. But it was bacon flavored lube. And it smelled like dog food, but it tasted like bacon. Oh god. They did a great job. Almost. Okay. Well, they also have. Hmm. There's this thing that's called a toilet snake, but. For no, toilets? this isn't even funny because you can't close the toilet seat on it. So what's the point? Hold oh. on. I thought I looked through this enough, but maybe I didn't because these are just not poop soap on a rope that just looks literally like shit on a rope with peanuts in it. Well, as we're eating almonds, bleh. What was so bad about almonds? A sexy elf on the shelf costume? Why? There we go. That's so dumb. Isn't that just a sexy elf? A cheese carving of a cell phone? We got a... Uh... These are dumb. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't knock the cheese carving. We got a, for Thanksgiving, we have butter that's in the shape of a turkey that's in our fridge. Wait, you what? We have butter that's carved into a turkey. It's in our fridge. And are you going to actually use it or are you going to save it because it's so cute that it looks like a turkey? No, we definitely need to use it. I don't know how salty it is, though. Hmm. That's the real problem. I only cook with unsalted butter. I don't even know the difference, but this between salted and unsalted butter. Yeah, but like what the difference is when you're cooking with it. It's smell proof bags. That's a good gift unsalted. for those gifting weed or just carrying it. Oh, there you go. That way your grandma's like not just like, oh, where's the skunk? I feel like at this point, every everyone's grandparents are already smoking weed. You know, I thought this was a really good article, but I'm done. Don't look at the 45 Weird Gifts by Huffington Post, because it is not that funny. So Ooh, Christmas movies. Huh? Christmas movies. Why is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yeah, it takes place during Christmas. Okay. Glad we're on the same page. And Bruce Willis is a like a, a face of like He's you know, middle middle class homes of America everywhere. Can you be mad at that? You can't. But I do have another article for you. These articles. I don't have videos. I didn't have time to come up with them today. It's but from this the is pretty New York good. Times. Wanderlust.co.uk, the oh. world's 13 weirdest Christmas traditions. Okay. Now, here is the preface of it. Venezuelans skate to church. Norwegians hide their brooms. And Catalans are obsessed with festive pooping. We reveal the weird, the wonderful, and festive traditions around the world. It's a Catalan. I don't know. Catalan. Catal Catalan. I don't know. Where is Catalan? Uh, so in Japan... Apparently, all they want for Christmas is KFC. Hell yeah. For many Japanese traditional uh, Christmas dinners, Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's Why? Well, because one, their KFC is probably oh. better than ours. Well, and it's set, yeah, due to a combination of tiny Japanese ovens. I got a burp. Excuse me. And a clever marketing campaign convicting locals, convincing locals. Oh, man, too much. Convincing locals that fried chicken is a traditional American Yuletide feast, reservations have to be made to eat at KFC on Christmas Day. And during the run-up to Christmas, Colonel Sanders statues outside of KFC's uh, Japanese outlets wear Santa gear, and the chicken is served in special holiday packaging. Demand is such that an online service has been created. Order your Christmas family bucket in advance and have it delivered. Speaking of delivery, should I order Domino's right now? It sounds so good. I am hungry for real food. 
Should I order Domino's or should I make dumplings and broccoli? But we're going to have to wait a while until we're done filming. We could make this a two-part series. Order. Okay. That's kind of funny, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, hey, (laughs) apparently the Japanese know what's up. Apparently they do. Okay. Shout out to anybody who can give me really good advice on how to travel around Japan. I need to do that someday. Oh, yeah. All I can do is introduce myself. That's about it. That's pretty good, though. I mean, I took two years of two years. Yeah, it was two years, right? No, I took one year, technically. Two semesters of Japanese in college. Yeah, oh, two can, semesters. So All I can do is introduce myself. That's about it. Hmm. Although I try and make myself sound very prim and proper when I do it. I almost, it's like, it's almost <gasps> like I turn on like my white people voice. They don't deliver here. Or they're closed. No delivery here. That's what I figured. I didn't know we were that far away from Domino's. Hold on. Maybe Grubhub has something. This still podcast trying to learn. is not brought to you in part by Grubhub. Or Domino's, unless they deliver here. If they do, maybe we'll give them a real shout out. But for now, while she tries to order something, I'm going to show you my Japanese introduction of myself. Hajime uh, <clears throat> What does that mean? Nice to meet you. Wow, can't do the voice like that. Why? You're get, you're get canceled. You can't do Japanese voice. Got you. Where's or Pizza Hut? Yeah, no, you inter- you you interrupted my introduction. Oh, it's shit. not just Hajime Mashite. <laughs> but yeah, Hajime Mashite, or if you are a male, uh, oh, actually, no, it would just still be that. Because yeah, otherwise it would be Watashiwa instead of Boku no. If you're a male, Boku. Boku no namai wa rodate dirundis. Hajime mashite. Dozo yoroshiku omigashimasu. You want pepperoni pizza? <laughs> sure. That means yes in Japanese. No, no, no. That's hi. Okay, so picking back up though, weird things that people do around the world. Norway says to hide your broom. Norway? Norway. No so, way. Norwegians believe that Christmas Eve coincides with the arrival of evil spirits and witches. That makes sense. Why are evil spirits and witches coming around on Christmas Eve? To steal your seed. It, I don't, what? Well, not your seed, but men's seed. It's only logical then that Norwegian, that Norwegian households hide all their brooms before they go to sleep. After all, nothing spoils quick Christmas quicker than finding your broom in broken pieces at the foot of a tree, trashed by some joyriding witch. Yep, joy riding Did witches. someone just get drunk and fuck up their broom and then they woke up and blamed it on a witch? <laughs> Norwegians? How would a, what do Norwegians sound like? Are they the ones that sound like these? And witches are forbidden near Bergen. Wherever Bergen is, which must be in Norway. Bergenworth? Huh? Bergenworth? I don't know. It just says Bergen. Grant us eyes. Did you order it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. This other place called Carcass. Carcass. Get your skates on. In the week oh, leading Carthus. up. Oh, James of I'm about to tell you. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, Venezuelans attend a daily church service called Misa de Agulant. Aguinaldo. Misa. Early morning mass. I'm sorry. Are they Jar Jar Binks? Misa de Aguinaldo. You better watch <laughs> out. In the capital. Oh, it's okay. We had Venezuelan neighbors growing up. Caracas. Who would assume? I'm probably not pronouncing it right. It is customary to travel to the church service on roller skates. That's pretty awesome. Indeed, it is so widespread. So widespread is this practice that many roads in the capital are closed until 8 a.m. So you got to get to church early, but that way they can provide Christmas worshipers a safe passage. But what about getting home? Then you walk home barefoot? No. Or do they close the roads again so you can skate home? How are you getting home? Oh, you're going to no, skate with your heels in early, your hands. That's how early mass is. It starts and ends by then. 
Hmm. They're not like lazy Americans where they're like, mass will start at 11. Yeah. I got it, huh? Well, because remember, in most of the, uh, most of those countries down there, you know, you got to have your, your siesta time at the middle yeah. of the day, which is freaking awesome. All right. In Austria, here's a fan favorite. Facing your Christmas demons. We all know this one. No. In Austria. Oh, Krampus. St. Nicholas has an evil counterpart called Krampus. He is the bad cop to St. Nick's good cop, a demon-like creature with one task, and that is to punish bad children before Christmas. Good. Men dress in devil costumes, roam the streets, carrying chains, and a basket for abducting especially bad children so they can haul them to hell. It's certainly one way of keeping kids off the streets. Tell me grown men just dress as Krampus and run around with chains, just like... And shake them at little kids, threatening to throw them in their baskets and drag them to hell if they're not good. I guess they got some pretty trustworthy people since they haven't decided to just say no to that. Maybe child abductions are low there. I don't know. I hope so. Here's the one you've been waiting for, though. Catalonia. Pooping their way through Christmas. Welcome to the bizarre Catalan tradition of caga tío or defecating log. Locals in Catalonia create a character out of a log. Mr. Drawing a face on it and giving it a hat. He loves me. I love you. Therefore, by association, I love you, even if you're a Jew. They spend a fortnight feeding it fruits, nuts, and sweets. <laughs> On Christmas Eve, the entire family beats the log with sticks and sings a traditional song that translates to... Mr. Hanky. If you don't crap well, I'll beat you with a stick until the log excretes all its treats. It's hard to comprehend why this tradition hasn't caught on elsewhere. They also decorate their nativity scenes with small pooping ceramic figurines, usually well-known characters often drawn from that year's news. The figurines always have their pants around their ankles. Wait, is the when they say log, do they mean a piece of shit? I think so. Create a character out of a log, drawing a face on it and giving it a hat. And they spend a fortnight feeding. Feeding the log. I'm going to mute this. So they poop some more. Because it has a kid in it. And I'm just. No, this looks like they're beating an actual log. It's I can't show it because it's little kids, but it's like little kids with a stick hitting a piece of wood. Then where does the poop come in? I don't know. If you don't crap well, I'll beat you with a stick. Amen. Where is Catalonia? It's a a place that definitely wasn't made up. Like Rabonia. It's in Spain. Huh. Spanish. Four provinces. Catalonia consists of four provinces. Provinces. Oh, yeah, Barcelona. Barcelona, Girona. Tarragona, Teresa, hmm. Girona. Interesting. Well, so there's that one. Um. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Again. Ooh. Oh, I feel like I've heard of this one in Greenland, a Christmas dinner that you'll never forget. So next time you find yourself complaining about grandma's festive Brussels sprouts, spare a a thought for the poor tykes in Greenland, because each Christmas they have to tuck into matak, which is raw whale skin with a little blubber and kiviak, which is made by wrapping an Auk, which is a small Arctic bird, in seal skin, burying it for several months, and then eating it, its decomposed flesh. Mm. Ew. So you take a dead bird, wrap it in seal skin, bury it, and then eat this decaying... Well, I mean, I assume you still cook it. Maybe the skin's, like, really freaking tasty after that. I don't know. Don't knock it till you try it. 
Honestly, it sounds I'm more, stinky. I'm more interested in the whale blubber. That's probably got to be some major stinky. flavor. Because <clears throat> everyone know. knows the fat's where the flavor's at. Hmm. The fat is where the flavor is at. That's where the flavor's at. Quote him on that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Okay. In Guatemala, how clean is your house? Guatemala, cleanliness really is next to godliness because locals believe that the devil and other evil spirits live in the dark, dirty corners of your house. Therefore, they set, they spend the week before Christmas sweeping up, collecting rubbish, and then piling everything in a huge heap outside. Finally, an effigy of uh, the devil, an effigy of the devil is placed on top, and the whole thing is set on fire. It's called La Cuema del Diablo, the burning of the devil, and the idea is for Guatemalans to burn all the bad from the previous year and start a new year to uh, from out of the ashes. Weird. Dirty houses do seem kind of dark. Okay. Now we're moving on to the Ukraine. Deck the halls with spider webs. Spiders. So in addition to standard tinsel, fairy lights, uh, and baubles, Ukrainians like to throw an artificial spider and web on the tree as well. The tradition has its origins in an old tale of a poor woman who couldn't afford to decorate her tree. So she woke up on Christmas morning to discover a spider had covered it in a glorious sparkling web. It's for good luck. It's not about poor housekeeping. It's like it flocked, That's kind of it's cute. Like it flocked the tree for her. She was so poor that a spider decorated her tree for her. Mm. There you go, Ma. What? Stop. All right. Okay. And yeah, we're back. <sighs> So about spider nice. webs, mom. We found okay. a cheaper way to flock your Christmas tree. Get a spider, let it spin its webs all over the tree, make it look beautiful. It's nice. So in Portugal, uh, during con soda, con soda, con soda, the traditional Christmas feast in Portugal, families sometimes set extra places at the dining table for deceased relatives. It's thought that the practice will ensure good fortunes for the household. And in some areas, crumbs are left on the hearth as well, as you thought, and you thought feeding all your living relatives was hard enough. So I don't think that's that weird, like leaving a place setting for, yeah. you know, especially if you have someone that like recently passed away. Here's a fun one in Italy, uh, where Santa's little helper is an old witch. Unable to conclusively prove the existence of Santa, the Vatican decided to throw its weight behind something they'd had countless dealings with. An old witch called La Befana, who delivers presents to kids in Italy. So the story goes that the three wise men invited the witch to accompany them to see the baby Jesus. She said she was too busy and the legend was born. So then how is she... Is that, that just them putting oh, the witch so into the Bible? That's them saying that apparently there's proof of a witch, but there's not proof of Santa. So they need to witch to So the we, the witch is the one that delivers the gifts, but that's not in the Bible. They're apparently just like, hey, the absence of evidence isn't the evidence of absence. But witchcraft is bad and oh, I don't understand. All right, well, interesting. Witchcraft is bad. Who said, who made up these words? Religious, religious. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. Uh, yes. Um, in the Czech Republic, uh, on Christmas Eve, unmarried Czech women stand with their backs to the door and toss one of their shoes over the shoulder. If it lands with the toe facing the door, it means they'll be married within the year. If it lands with the heel facing the door, they're in for another year of watching Bridget Jones movies. Perhaps it's better than marrying a heel, though. <laughs> I should try this and see if I'm going to get married this year. I think it's more of like if you're going to be single or not. Oh, I guess. Yeah. So in Germany, they fill their shoes instead of stockings with stuff. I guess that's not too far off. That's pretty dope. That's pretty like normal. Hey, hey, the bigger the feet, the better the presents, or the more the presents. Mm. I'm in facade, so that sounds great. We're almost okay. Here's the last one in Spain New Year, new knickers. 
Here's one for the New Year in Spain. It is customary to wear red underwear on New Year's Eve. Uh, in the small town of La Font de la Figuera, la uh, they've taken the tradition Figuera. one step further. A New Year's Eve run with the runners wearing just red underwear. Coincidentally, the town has the highest incidences of pneumonia in the county. So they run in red mm -hmm. on Christmas. They also run with the bulls. They just love running. They're probably in the best shape of anyone. So you know, even though you know most of them probably end up dying from pneumonia or bull stabbing. Oh, probably. It's okay. They just weren't fast enough, obviously. They just weren't. But with that, this is all I've got for you. But I think it's a good start to just get people ready for the season. And we promise to bring more because mom's coming to town. That's right. So we'll be interviewing our mom. And we actually, it's under Dylan's laptop, but I've got cards from, oh, it's the, the AND project or something like that. The skin deep, but they are uh, cards Experience. that basically rethink, connect. I've got the family one, the amusing one, and um, basically you're asking questions that you wouldn't always think to ask your family or your friends, and it's supposed to give you deeper connections with the people that you love. So we're going to give that a try. We're also going to prove that Dylan is the favorite child, which we all knew. Oh yeah, we're gonna but we're we're gonna blow it out, right out of the. We're water. gonna get mom to say it out loud. Not necessarily say it out loud. She probably won't, but we'll definitely get the cards to say it for us. You can comment in the comments to say <laughs> to also say it with she, her because we all who is the favorite child. We'll pull it. We'll pull it. We already know, but we'll pull it anyway. Yeah. So, anywho, that's all we've got for you today. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Relatable, the first in-person edition. That's right. But stick around because we've got plenty more to come, and we even have a oh, crazy got... transformation video coming. Oh, up. there's a transformation that's right. coming. There's transformations happening everywhere. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.